In this week's Weekly Funny Story Jokes, we bring you our best funny story joke compilation of the week. These story jokes are sure to make you laugh, from the first one to the last one. These are our story jokes which we love to generate. This week we bring you five story jokes, starting with a story about some pigs until we end with a funny Delilah story joke. Please watch to the end, as we keep the best one for last. So, sit back, get the popcorn, and get ready to laugh until your stomach is. In our first funny story joke of the week, we bring you an animal story of how pigs got so delicious. In today's funny story joke episode of What Were We Thinking Animal Antics Edition, we head down to the muddiest, snortiest corner of the farmyard, Pig City. Now, these guys get a bad rap for being, well, a little leisurely. But before you judge a book by its floppy ears, let's just say Babe wasn't the only brainiac in the pig pen. So, the real question isn't, are they dumb? But rather, why the lounging lizard act? Buckle up, folks, because the answer to that juicy question is coming up after the break. We'll also be taking a hilarious detour to see who else showed up late to the characteristic distribution party hosted by the big guy upstairs. Spoiler alert, let's just say some animals got all the good stuff while others got stuck with the leftover weirdness. Stay tuned, and remember, laughter is the best medicine. Besides that stuff pigs might discover in their future fancy lab coats. Just saying. Move over, lassie. There's a new Brainiac in town, and it comes complete with a corkscrew tail and a penchant for belly rubs. Yes, I'm talking about pigs, those adorable oinks with more intellectual horsepower than you might expect. Forget Hollywood's talking swine. Real-life pigs are studious aces, remembering complex tasks, like that special piggy bank trick that led to a bacon bonanza months later. They're basically walking Rolodexes with snouts, these brainy porkers are also navigational ninjas. Don't be fooled by the cute piglets bouncing around the sky. They're training for the Piglympics, a future event perhaps. With their inner GPS, they're maze-running champions, finding the fastest route to a mud puddle, or, if they're feeling adventurous, the nearest donut. Speaking of tools, pigs are the original oinker engineers. Don't expect spaceships, but they have a surprising knack for getting things done. Need a comfy napping spot? No problem. Just grab a stick and watch them dig like pros. Feeling a bit vain? Pigs have even been known to use mirrors to check out their undeniably intelligent reflections. Step aside, Mario. There's a new contender in town. Pigs are surprisingly adept at mastering touchscreen games. They use their snouts to navigate, strategize, and achieve their goals all while potentially oinking insults at the virtual pigs they're trouncing. Social butterflies with excellent sniffing skills, pigs are the ultimate party animals, minus the dancing, because of hooves. They form strong bonds, communicate like gossip queens at a pigsty salon, and even show empathy towards their fellow oinkers. Basically, they're the most supportive friend group you could ask for, as long as you don't mind sharing your snacks. So. The next time you see a pig snoozing in the mud, don't underestimate that snorting scholar. Their minds are like well-cured hams, full of surprising depth and flavor. Who knows, maybe someday we'll have prestigious universities like Swineford or Hogwarts, with a touch of magic, of course, where these brilliant creatures can truly reach their full potential. Just imagine the possibilities, a world powered by pig-engineered wind farms made of mud or a cure for the common cold discovered by a team of bespectacled pigs in tiny lab coats. The future is looking bright, and it's definitely smelling like truffles. All right, folks, gather around the virtual campfire for some Animal Kingdom gossip. Picture this. The Almighty is throwing a cosmic pool party, handing out personality traits like pool floats. Lions are snagging the bravery floaties. Dolphins are grabbing the social butterfly pool noodles. But who gets stuck with the inflatable inner tube of laziness? You guessed it, the pigs. It's a sunny day with all the kingdom's animals gathered around when God is handing out characteristics to all of the animals, and he's getting close to the end of the list. All the animals have picked except the lions, the beavers, and the pigs. 
God looks up from the list and says, Who wants courage? One of the pigs says to another, Ooh, we should get that. The other one says, Nah, who wants to be courageous? You have to strut around. Humans will start hunting you. It's a huge pain. Let's wait. The lions speak up and take the courage. Next up, industrious. Who wants to be known for being industrious? Hey, we could definitely be that. Make stuff, stay busy, it sounds good. The other pig says, Are you crazy? Get up at dawn? Work all day? Who wants that? I'm sure God saved the best for last. The beavers pipe up and take industriousness, so God goes back to his list. Next up, we have wings. Who wants to fly? The first pig says, Wow, we've got to get that one. We could fly all day? The second pig says, Exactly. Fly around all day, beat your wings all the time? That sounds exhausting. You'd have to fly for hours beating your wings like mad to stay aloft. No thank you. Let's wait for the really good stuff. God looks at his list, getting to the end. Let's see. Claws are taken. Flight went to the birds. The cheetah got speed. Okay, here we go. Who wants to be delicious? Our second funny story joke of the day is a joke about what you should not wish for. Buckle up, Buttercup, because today's funny story joke dives headfirst into the world of frogs. Now, before you start glazing over like a frog staring at a fly that's clearly out of reach, hear me out. Frogs are like the ninjas of the animal kingdom. They've been around since the dinosaurs, chilling out in the shadows for over 200 million years. Imagine a T-Rex tripping over a grumpy Goliath frog. That's a sight I'd pay to see. Speaking of Goliath frogs, these guys are the incredible hulks of the frog world. They can grow to the size of a newborn baby and weigh as much as a tub of butter, though hopefully less messy. On the other hand, you've got the Cuban tree toad, who's about the size of your thumb, the perfect hitchhiker for a hummingbird. Here's the coolest part. Frogs are basically living superheroes. They can see almost everything, except maybe what's directly behind them. Gotta work on that froggy blind spot. And when they gobble up a fly, their eyeballs actually pop down into their mouths to help push the food down like a built-in froggy plunger. Want to be a champion leaper? Frogs can jump over 20 times their body length. That's like a human hopping over a football field in a single bound. And some frogs can even glide through the air like tiny green parachutes. Talk about a superhero landing. Frogs come in all shapes, sizes, and most importantly, colors. Some frogs use their camouflage skills to blend in with their surroundings, like a living piece of mud or a clump of moss, perfect for hiding from hungry snakes. But some poisonous frogs are like walking neon signs, letting everyone know they're not to be messed with. These little guys can even survive some pretty extreme conditions. The wood frog can practically turn into a popsicle with 65% of its body frozen solid. Talk about playing dead taken to a whole new level. There's even a frog out there who can hold out for rain for up to seven years. That's some serious patience. And let's not forget about the amazing ways frogs reproduce. Some frog moms carry their babies around in pouches like kangaroos, while others have their young develop right on their backs. There's even a frog mom who swallows her eggs and lets them hatch in her stomach, like a living froggy nursery. So next time you see a frog, don't underestimate this amazing amphibian. They've been around for ages, they've got some incredible superpowers, and they come in a variety of wild colors and crazy reproductive styles. Frogs, they're basically the coolest little dudes and dudettes on the planet. All right, all right, hold your lily pads, frog fanatics. We know these little green dudes are basically amphibian superheroes with built-in eyeball plungers and the leaping skills of Olympic champions. Seriously, how do they do that? But enough with the frog facts, let's get to the real riveting story. Woman plays golf on a slightly rainy morning and hits the ball deep into the rough. When she went to look for it, she came across a poor frog caught in a trap, presumably the work of a nasty witch who wants to make trouble for bug charms. If you free me, I'll give you three wishes, said the frog. The woman has a good heart, 
and would have freed him anyway without the wishes. When the frog was free, he said, but you have to think carefully. Of everything you wish, your husband gets 10 times more. The woman agrees, and her first wish is to be the most beautiful woman in the whole world. The frog warns her and says, just remember, this will mean that your husband will be 10 times more attractive than you. He will be a magnet to every woman like a candle to a moth. I don't care. I am the most beautiful woman in the world, so he will only have eyes for me. Said the woman Kabam, and she is the most beautiful woman in the world. For her second win, she wants to be the richest woman in the world. The frog warns her again, this will then mean that your husband is the richest man in the world, ten times richer than you. I do not care. We are married in community of property, so we will both have the same amount. Kabam. She is the richest woman in the world. Her third wish is a little more difficult. What does she want that her husband will get ten times more? Unfortunately, money makes people greedy, and suddenly she gets an inspiration. For my third wish, please, I would like to have a mild heart attack. At the same moment, her husband also gets one, but ten times lighter than hers. <laughs> Our third funny story joke of the day is about this guy that landed himself with some monks, and then he heard a noise. Buckle up, giggle gang because today's funny story joke dives into the hilarious world of monks, those guys who make watching paint dry look like a rave. First, let's peek behind the curtain of their supposedly serene lives. Here's the thing about monks. They were the original shut-ins, but way cooler, and with way less takeout pizza boxes piled up. Imagine history class as scrolling through your ex's social media after a bad breakup. Everything seems filtered and staged, perfect vacation photos, inspirational quotes about finding inner peace, and way too many pictures of their adorable new cat. Because of course, they got a cat. It all screams, look how happy I am without you. That's kinda how history portrays monks, serene figures in flowing robes, chanting in echoing monasteries. Basically, the ultimate relaxation app come to life, minus the soothing nature sounds. But dig a little deeper, past the carefully crafted image, and things get a bit more, well, messy. Picture them as your roommate who's obsessed with meal prepping for the entire week. Except instead of neatly labeled Tupperware containers, it's giant cauldrons of stew bubbling away, enough to feed a small village. Because, let's be honest, some monasteries basically were small villages. Forget about weekend Netflix binges, their idea of entertainment was copying ancient texts by candlelight, meticulously illustrating the margins with fantastical creatures that looked like they were drawn during a particularly intense dream. Seriously, Google medieval bestiary. Here's the kicker. These seemingly uptight monks were surprisingly innovative. They were the original craft beer brewers of Europe. Monks and hops talk about a holy happy hour invented new farming techniques that are still used today, because apparently even back then people wanted to maximize their kale yield, and even became the OG copyright enforcers, fiercely guarding their collection of painstakingly copied texts. Think of them as the medieval version of a DMCA takedown notice, minus the internet. So, the next time you think history is just a bunch of boring dates and dusty scrolls, remember, it's like scrolling through your ex's seemingly perfect social media. Beneath the surface, there's a whole lot of unexpected things going on, from secret brewing operations to artistically strange doodles, all wrapped up in a package that's way more interesting and way less likely to make you feel bad about yourself. All right, all right, enough with the history lesson already. You're probably thinking, monks, serenity? Sounds about as exciting as watching paint dry while listening to elevator music on repeat. Hold on to your meditation beads, history buffs, and those who secretly yearn for a life of robe wearing and silence. No judgment, because here's the real tea. A man with a car that sounds like a bag of angry cats on a bumpy road cruises past a quaint monastery. 
Thinking his chariot might finally give up the ghost, he pulls into the driveway with a sigh. He walks up to the grand oak doors, expecting a chorus of Gregorian chants as his welcome. Instead, the doors creak open to reveal a group of monks with suspiciously youthful faces and a glint of mischief in their eyes. They usher him in with surprising enthusiasm, offering a hearty meal, mostly vegetables, but hey, free food, and a place to stay. They even take a look at his car, tinkering with it for a while with an assortment of tools and what appears to be a rubber chicken. Intrigued, the man asks if it'll hold. One monk shrugs and says, maybe for a while, as long as you don't hit any potholes or angry geese. Feeling slightly bewildered but grateful, the man settles in for the night. Just as he's about to drift off, the strange sound begins. The next morning, he asked the monks what the sound was, but they said, We can't tell you what. You are not a monk. The man is disappointed but thanks them and continues his journey. A few years later, he drove there again and decided to stay again because he had now made friends. The monks invite him in, give him food and a place to sleep. That night, he hears again the same strange sound he heard last time. The next morning, he asked again what it was, but the monks answered, We can't tell you because you are not a monk. The man wants to die of curiosity. Even if he has to become a monk to find out, he will do it. He quit his job and did a 10-year monk course. Now he is a full-fledged monk. After initiation, the other monks said, Congratulations. You are now a monk. We will now show you the source of the sound. They lead the man to a wooden door where the head monk says, The sound is real behind the door. The man tries to open the door, but it is locked. May I have the key? He asked. They give him the key, and he opens the door. Behind the wooden door is another door made of stone. The man asks for the key to the stone door. The monks give him the key, and he opens it too, only to find there is another steel door. He gets another key. This goes on until he has opened a total of seven doors. When he opened the last door, he was amazed to see the source of the sound. Would you like to know what is behind the door? But I cannot tell you what it is because you are not a monk. In the fourth funny story of the day, we bring you a man hiding in a pot. Hilarious. All right, gather round, chuckleheads. Today's tale is a laugh riot fueled by desperation, good looks, and a car that runs hotter than a politician caught in a lie. Please wait until the end for the punchline. We got Edwin, whose car is about as useful as a chocolate teapot in the Sahara, and a woman who looks like she could sell ice cubes to Eskimos, but with a secret that screams trouble louder than a karaoke night gone horribly wrong. Hold on to your sides, history buffs, because we're about to take a detour that's more exciting than a tax audit with a missing receipt. Forget stocks. 17th century Holland went bulb berserk. Tulip mania swept the nation, with fortunes blooming and withering faster than a fickle flower. Fancy tulip bulbs, especially rare varieties with vibrant stripes and unusual speckles, became the new gold. People traded houses for single blooms, and everyone, from cobblers to cheesemakers, dreamt of riches blooming overnight. Enter the con artists, the Rembrandts of Ruse. These smooth talkers spun fantastical tales of mythical tulips. The nightingale's lament, they'd claim, only bloomed under a full moon serenaded by a lovesick nightingale and could fetch you a castle and a lifetime supply of cheese. Spoiler alert, no such nightingales existed and cheese prices stayed firmly Gouda. Blinded by greed and visions of easy money, people gobbled up these stories. Contracts for future delivery of these mythical bulbs flew faster than pigeons at a spilled seed market. They were essentially buying tulip-shaped air, completely oblivious. The whole market was a house of cards built on hot air and even hotter tulips. Eventually, someone, perhaps a particularly hungry nightingale, realized the emperor, or rather, the tulip market, had no clothes. Prices plummeted faster than a rogue wheel of cheese rolling downhill, and fortunes vanished overnight. 
the Great Dutch Tulip fiasco serves as a hilarious and slightly tragic reminder. Not everything shiny is a golden bulb. Don't believe smooth talkers, especially when they're selling flowers with suspiciously specific blooming requirements. After all, a bird in the hand or a wheel of cheese in the pantry is worth a field of imaginary tulips. Hold on to your sides, folks, because Buckle Up just ain't strong enough for this. We're about to launch ourselves into a con so audacious, so ridiculously brilliant, it'll have your funny bone begging for mercy. A man, let's call him Edwin, was driving through the Montana when his car sputtered like a politician caught in a lie detector test. Luckily, a farm loomed ahead like a mirage, and he swerved in desperate hope for some help. Pulling into the yard, he was greeted by a sight that would make a lesser man clutch his pearls. A scrawny man, as bare as a newborn baby on picture day, was busy hollowing out of a house with a look of intense concentration, like a squirrel frantically stockpiling nuts for the apocalypse climbed into a black soap pot. To add to the absurdity, the man seemed to be wife emerged from the house looking like a vision, enough to make a scarecrow question its sexuality. And just when you think things can't get any weirder, a beat-up backy pulls in, driven by a man who looked like he'd wrestled a herd of angry meerkats and lost. Edwin stammered out his car troubles to the uncle, hoping for a drop of water for his radiator that was hotter than his bank account after a weekend in Vegas. The uncle, bless his bewildered heart, offered a bucket with a wink and a... Sure thing, city slicker. Don't go spending it all in one place on fancy car coolant. During the water exchange, the conversation drifted, and the uncle, as curious as a goat with a lottery ticket, asked, So what brings you way out here anyway? The man puffed out his chest like a pigeon trying to impress a peacock. I, sir, am a con artist, top of the line. The farmer snorted, a sound suspiciously like a pig with hiccups. Con artist? That's just a fancy way of saying you nickel and dime folks for a living. Now real con artists? Those are the chaps in Weatherworld who promise 10 feet of rain in Montana with a sprinkle of magic dust. The man, determined to prove his point, grinned like a coyote who just outsmarted a rancher. Look here, Uncle. See that black soap pot over there? I bet you five bucks I can make a whole man appear out of it with a little fire. Just light one under that bad boy, and presto, instant friend. The uncle snorts laughter escaping like a donkey with hiccups. He builds the fire anyway, mostly because the idea of a magic man popping out of a soap pot is just too darn ridiculous to pass up. So there they stand, fire crackling, pot bubbling, when suddenly a bald dude leaps out and sprints off like a startled springbok. The uncle stares, jaw slack as a windsock in a hurricane. Finally, he scratches his head and mumbles, Well, I'll be a yellow-spotted dick-dick. If I didn't know better, I would have sworn that that man was our Reverend Nell. <laughs> now we bring you the last funny joke of the day. As promised, we believe we left the best for last. Once the joke are done, and you liked this compilation, then subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon, and you will be notified of our content. Now let's laugh. Forget Netflix and chill. In today's funny story joke, it's Bible stories and cackle. That's right, we're diving into the life of Delilah, the OG hairstylist with a side hustle in betrayal. But before we spill the tea, or should I say Philistine wine, Let's brush up on a little history that's more dramatic than your grandma's soap opera collection. So, there once was this dude named Samson. Think Popeye on steroids, the kind of guy who could floss his teeth with barbed wire. Now, Samson had a secret weapon, his hair. It wasn't like luscious locks flowing in the breeze. No, it was more like a giant hairy chia pet growing on his head. But hey, it held the key to his superhuman strength. So who was he to judge? Enter Delilah, a woman with a smile that could melt glaciers and a heart colder than a penguin's belly button. She was working for Samson's arch enemies, the Philistines, who saw Samson as a walking, hairy wrecking ball to their sandcastle empires. 
Delilah set her sights on Samson, batting her eyelashes like feathery windshield wipers. Samson, bless his naive heart, was smitten faster than a moth to a disco ball. Night after night, Delilah would ply Samson with compliments and gourmet protein shakes. Gotta keep those muscles fueled. All the while, she'd be casually dropping hints about his strength like, wow, Samson, you're so strong. Is it like a special hair gel you use? Samson, as dense as a brick, wrapped in another brick, never suspected a thing. Finally, after weeks of relentless eyelash batting and protein shakes, seriously, the man was starting to look like a walking protein bar. Delilah sprung the trap. She threw Samson a dinner party so lavish it made a Roman emperor blush. Wine flowed like a broken fire hydrant, and Samson, feeling a little woozy, thanks to a special protein shake, started spilling secrets like a leaky faucet. It's my hair, Delilah, Samson bellowed, dramatically pointing at his chia pet head. These luscious locks hold the key to my strength. Delilah, internally doing a victory dance that would make Beyonce jealous, feigned surprise. Oh, Samson, really? That's interesting, she said, her voice dripping with sugar and betrayal. Later that night, as Samson snored like a grizzly bear with a head cold, Delilah snuck in with a pair of rusty nail clippers she borrowed from the Philistine janitor. Let's just say those clippers weren't designed for industrial strength chia pet removal. It wasn't pretty, but with a few snips and a lot of sweat, Delilah relieved Samson of his hairy power source. The next morning, Samson woke up feeling like a deflated air mattress. He went to flex his biceps, but all he got was a pathetic wiggle. The Philistines stormed in, ready to capture their weakened foe. Samson, feeling like a fool who got outsmarted by a rusty nail clipper, could only stare in disbelief. But wait, just as the Philistines were about to haul him off, Delilah stepped forward. Oh, those silly Philistines, she scoffed. Don't they know real strength comes from the heart? Besides, she leaned in conspiratorially. Samson still has his eyebrows. Maybe that's where the real power lies? The Philistines, thoroughly confused and slightly terrified of a woman wielding rusty nail clippers, froze. Samson, catching on, winked at Delilah. Maybe she wasn't so bad after all. Maybe they could team up and create some real chaos for the Philistines. After all, who wouldn't underestimate a woman with a rusty nail clipper and a mischievous glint in her eye? All right, all right. History nap time is over. Those textbooks can go back to collecting dust next to Samson's hairpiece. Let's get down to brass tacks, or should I say, weave extensions, because this Delilah story is about to get wilder than a bad perm in a hurricane. In the quaint town of Hope Springs Eternal, the first church of perpetual bachelordom boasted the most devout congregation this side of the Mississippi. Their motto? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, especially if you're already married to her. Strict? Absolutely. But these men cherished their independence, their fishing buddies, and their Sunday morning potlucks, heavy on the sausage rolls. Then, disaster arrived in the form of a black-headed bombshell named Delilah. Think Jessica Rabbit meets Dolly Parton on a bender. Heads swiveled faster than a sprinkler on high pressure. Delilah, bless her manipulative heart, batted her eyelashes with the grace of a hummingbird and purred like a kitten with a full belly of cream. Soon, divorce papers were flying faster than gossip at a bingo night. One by one, the once faithful filled the pews less and the offering plate more closely resembled a thimble. Pastor Miller, a man whose beard rivaled Moses, saw his congregation dwindle faster than a birthday cake at a toddler party. Panic bloomed on his rosy cheeks like a rogue tomato in his victory garden. Desperate times called for desperate measures. So, Pastor Miller, armed with a hymnal and a surprising amount of desperation, marched over to Delilah's doorstep. Now, the good pastor had never dealt with anything more flirtatious than a rogue squirrel after a donation of stale nuts. This was going to be interesting. The pastor and his chief elder are sent by the church council to visit Delilah in the congregation in an attempt to get her back on the narrow road. 
she has led many a brother into temptation so that he stumbles, falls, and remains lying. When they sat down across from her, it is clear that you have to be a strong man to understand this. Delilah. She has long, slender legs, and she wears such a short miniskirt that she could almost have left it on. Clearly, she has also worked on her assets because she is so witty that gravity has no hold on her at all. The elder tries to ignore it, but still the text from the Song of Songs comes to mind about the fat lambs that graze among the white lilies. As a mitigating circumstance, she at least has a pendant with an herb around her neck, but the herb plays hide-and-seek among those gooey lambs. The pastor notices his brother here beside him, swallows nervously, and stares at the woman, hypnotized like a little feeler by a cunning snake. Brother, are your eyes fixed on the cross? He admonished, I'm trying, Reverend, muttered the elder. But the two murderers, on either side of the cross, have me in their sights. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.